my FJ Cruiser is lifted, but for the past 10 years, I never installed a differential drop. Did that ruin my CV axles? Or it actually saved myself from bigger headaches? Just what should you do for your Toyota? Let's find out. Hi, welcome to Tinker's Adventure. I'm Kai. From the recent poll I did on YouTube, roughly 40% of you think you should have a diff drop, and 60% voted against it. Should I get a diff drop is one of the most frequently asked questions I receive. There are plenty of anecdotal theories over the internet, both for and against a diff drop. But to get a well-educated conclusion, we must consider both sides of the story and understand the physics. So in this video, we'll look at actual measurements on actual parts. By the end, you should have a much more definite answer about diff drop. Make sure you watch to the end where I will share an unpopular recommendation on what you should do instead. Let's get started. The main argument for getting a diff drop is to reduce wear on the CV joints. But let's first understand the mechanism why CV angle leads to wear. When the axle is straight, the entire assembly just spins together as a whole. The internal components of the joint do not have any relative motion. Mechanical wear occurs when you have load and surface sliding. In engineering, we call this PV, or pressure velocity. Because we do not have surface velocity between the components, practically there is no wear. As we lift the suspension, both joints are now bent at an angle. As the tire spins, this angle might look stationary, but if you look from the axle, we are basically bending this joint around and around. We are now exercising the constant velocity joints. The bearing balls will start sliding along the grooves. The higher the angle, the more sliding occurs. Now we start to have surface velocity. However, if you have a part-time four-wheel drive, your axles receive no torque during highway driving. So we do not have meaningful surface pressure. Therefore, we still don't have meaningful PV, thus mechanical wear. Now, what about full-time four-wheel drive on highway? Hmm, we'll come back to this later. Now, I do want to point out, if you have a lot of lift, that will create wear and tear on the CV boot and that is regardless of torque. If the boot is torn and you ran out of grease, then that will start damaging the joint. So this damage is not directly caused by CV angle, because the boot getting punctured by an object will do exactly the same. So in my opinion, if you have tons of lift and you want to save your CV boots, using high angle boots is a better solution than doing a diff drop. A related but slightly different argument for diff drop is that after a lift, your CV may bind and break more easily at full droop. This is not so black and white. Let me explain. For late model Toyota IFS, suspension full droop is set by the length of the coilover. This length does not change when you adjust the ride height. For many aftermarket lifts, the full droop is actually identical to stock, which puts the CV at around 12 degrees. Even for extended travel coilovers that adds one inch extra droop, the CV will be around 17 degrees. To find out where exactly the CV will bind, I first disconnected the coilover. The factory UCA ball joint was the next thing to bind. At this point, the CV angle was about 20 degrees, but it still didn't bind. So to take it further, I changed to an aftermarket UCA. Now, the axle shaft collides with the inner joint housing at around 22 degrees but the outer joint still have more room to go. So as long as you have the correct coilover total length, you will not bind your CV after a lift. By total length, I meant the coilover length itself plus whatever spacers you have on top. Be very careful on that. It is true, the high angle with extended droop will weaken the axle, but that effect is eclipsed by how you drive. In the end, it is high torque and high wheel speed that kills axle. And those things all come from the driver's input. I have personally witnessed many broken CVs on the trail. A good number of them have diff drop installed. Diff drop alone will not save your axle, but your driving style will. Straight. Straight. Ah. Oh, shit. Ah. Now, let's come back to lifted full-time forward drive on highway. 
in theory, we have PVs everywhere we drive. Should we get a diff drop? In an ideal world, I wish I can plot you a relation between CV life and lift height, but the real world is far from this simple, so I do not have a definite answer. But fortunately, because of some of my previous suspension videos, both Iron Man and Bilstein reached out to me, so I had the privilege to connect with their engineering team. So I asked them about diff drop, and their response is, no, they did not see a meaningful CV wear in their extensive vehicle testing. Thus, neither of them mandate a diff drop for any of their suspension lift. Ironman's chief engineer actually brought up a good point, that the diff drop requirement depends on vehicle model. Some vehicles indeed need one, so they will include a diff drop in the suspension kits, such as the Land Cruiser 100 series, but this do not apply for the newer Toyota platform. This is very interesting, because I think this might be the source of confusion about diff drop. People simply overgeneralize across all vehicles, but in reality, not all IFS are created equal. What's more interesting, Ironman actually offer a diff drop kit for the late model Toyotas. It's just not part of the kit. So what's up with that? Turns out, they only recently added that simply due to popular demand. So my imagine behind the scene is, there are so many people asking for a diff drop because somewhere on the internet says so. Now on Ironman's side, it takes effort to educate people and change your mind. So instead, fine, we'll get what you ask for. Why not? We'll make some money along the way. I do want to point out, both Ironman and Bilstein mentioned in the end that there's no harm doing diff drop spacers. It can only help the dryline components. So they take a why not stance on diff drop. Yeah. Why not? It's cheap and easy, and there's no harm anyway. Or is there? Now, let's take a look on the other side of the story. Hey, if this video is helpful to you thus far, I would really appreciate your support by checking out the products I design on TinkerDesign.com. I just released a very unique shift knot design that fits most Toyota trucks. You will also find cool merch like this hat. Thank you for supporting this channel. Now, let's talk more about diff drops. There are a few popular arguments against diff drop spacers. First is the front dry shaft pinion angle, but I personally don't think it is significant enough to do harm. The second one is the fluid level no longer reach the pinion bearing, but when the gears are spinning, the ring gear will sling gear oil onto the pinion. The fluid inside the differential is by no means stationary, so I don't think it's a big deal either. My main dislike about diff drop is ground clearance. I know, there is information out there that really downplay the ground clearance impact. Again, this depends on vehicle as well as skip plate design, so we should not overgeneralize. For the Toyota Prado platform specifically, the factory skip plate, the TRD, or a high clearance design like the Ironman, the front plate pretty much sit right on these two differential mounting points. If you space these two mounting points one inch lower, you will need to drop the skip plate one inch as well. Now, is one inch a lot? It depends on the context. When you go from the factory 32 inch tire to the popular 33s, you gain only half inch of ground clearance. If you ask, wait, isn't that one inch? You need to go do your math homework. And when you go from 33s to 35s, which take a lot more work and money, now you gain one inch of clearance. But you gave all this away by installing a one inch diff drop. Sure, the front skip plate is only part of the ground clearance gain. But this is a high hit area. Because it overhangs in front of the tires, it reaches the obstacle before the tire starts climbing. So in my opinion, you want it as tugged in as possible. With some skip plate design, you don't need to drop it a full one inch. But that's simply because it has less ground clearance to begin with. Without a diff drop, the front diff almost sits as low as the bottom cross member. And there's very little room between the skip plate and the diff housing. And after a drop, your front diff will become the lowest point. And if you didn't reserve space between the skip plate and the front diff, when you hit a rock, all the load will transfer right into the front diff, and you'll have a very high chance breaking these mounting arms. Okay, some of you may say, I'm not a rock crawler. I'm happy to trade ground clearance for the peace of mind in CV angle. That's totally valid. Not everyone needs to be a hard wheeler and beat up their trucks. But I still want to show you, with one inch diff spacers, you only drop the inner CV by 0.3 to 0.4 inch. 
this little bit should not give you a meaningful peace of mind. So overall, I personally think a diff thrust spacer is a bad trade-off. However, there is a different arm style diff drop. It truly drops the inner CV by over an inch. But more importantly, it does not reduce the ground clearance at the two front mounting points. And of course, we still lose ground clearance at the differential housing. But at that location, the tires already start climbing, just like the rear differential. And that makes a lot of difference. But because of its construction, it is many times more expensive. I still don't think it is a must-have for CV angle like we already went over. However, what I see is the potential that this allow us to gain another inch of down travel, which a lifted IFS really lacks. And I meant one inch beyond what today's extended travel coilovers already offer. So we might be able to pull 10 inch of travel using factory width control arms. I don't have first-hand experience with this product, so I cannot say that for sure. But if you see this as a suspension travel performance upgrade, then it may start to justify the high price tag. Now, let's leave the arm style diff drop aside and focus on the traditional diff drop spacers. What's my final take on what you should do? Don't do it. Jesse, don't do it. Your CV axles are fine. But for those who are still not convinced and want more security, I propose an alternate solution. Don't lift so high. Keep it under two inch or less and you'll realize a lot of benefits. You may say, man, I need a lift to fit those big tires. No, you don't. In my four common myths about IFS lifts video, we already proven more lift won't help you fit larger tires. And it will actually decrease your articulation off-road. If you're like, what? Go watch that video right now. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more videos just like this one.